Now I want to go into the third topic, which is social media. And this, I consider all this pre-launch. These are all things you guys can do right away. You can work on your brand, messaging, positioning, and then social media activities, even before you launch. So going social through the blogosphere and developing a presence in social networks and microblogging communities, it's a key way to engage stakeholders in conversation and create buzz about your product and service. And the bottom line is you've got to go where your audience is and you can start right away. So I, I have a couple of questions for different panelists and I'd like to start with Adam, which is what can startups do to find their stakeholders, find their diverse audiences? How do you turn them into enthusiasts? How do you turn them into evangelists? And what happens if there's no conversation taking place about your, in your category? That, that, that would really suck. Um, so yeah, you, you gotta figure out, okay, who are our stakeholders gonna be? And there's usually six or seven different categories. You know, they might be uh, your competitors' customers, they might be the few customers you may have at this point, uh, maybe media analysts, critics, what have you. You gotta, you know, bust out the whiteboard, rent a whiteboard, or, you know, go to a friend's office and use their whiteboard. You know, draw these people up on a whiteboard, look at a couple of competitors, find the guys who are maybe two or three rungs ahead of you, figure out how many stakeholders they've engaged with. So like, let's say you sell toilet plungers and you know, there's the big plunger company in Michigan. They've engaged with like, you know, 300 stakeholders. You know, go do some research on the internet, figure out how many people they've talked to. Figure they have a successful hit rate of like maybe 25%. So if it looks like they've engaged with 100, they've probably targeted 400. You should be engaging with 450 then. But then you're like, wait a second. There's an opportunity cost to doing this. Can we afford to like do some kind of crazy run of network outreach, or should we be really targeted? You've got to make that choice. But just be sure that you know you're realistic in how much time you have to devote to this. Once you, you're about ready to engage these people, you got to sort of check your holster and say, wait, you know, do we have the strategy ready to go? Do we have the right message to talk with them, not at them? Because you know this is this is the point where this is fully conversational. Any pitch you send, like you know, uh, an email. This, if it doesn't come off right, it could end up on some really funny blogs really fast and you look really stupid. So you gotta, gotta be sure that everything is ready to go and that you're ready to answer the tough questions. After that, if you realize, well, wait a second, that our entire market doesn't have any people talking about us, well, then you gotta do something about it. I work with a company called Rocky. They're probably the largest brand of social network uh, application software. I call them like the Microsoft of Facebook, if you will. And you know, we realized we wanted to book some speaking gigs for them, but all the speaking gigs were a little bit inappropriate because they weren't exactly about their market. So what did we do? We called our friends in room full of people and we said, let's, let's make a conference all about social gaming. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we called up all of their competitors and invited them too. Because you need everybody in the same room talking to have a conversation. So anyway, it's May uh, 22nd at the Kabuki if you're around. I love that idea. I just like the idea of, of creating new tactics if you can't find one that works for you. Same thing with categories. If you guys don't fit into a category that you can lead, create your own category and sell that. It works pretty well. Um, along those lines, I mean, one thing that we have found is that we don't live in a finite culture. I mean, for example, uh, an article came out a year and a half ago that there can actually be 19,000 ways to customize a Starbucks coffee. No lie, it's beyond my um, thinking and I like caffeine a lot, so I, I think about it a lot, but there are 19,000 ways. We really want to customize. So we used to think that, you know, Ford would say every color so long as it's black. It's not the way it is anymore. You could get really creative. And you can find that the same customer that may have use for a Facebook may also have use to launch their own social, social network on Ming. So it's, it's really interesting where we've come to with creating categories and you know, being able to find out how a customer really sways between two, so. Yeah, and the recent growth on Ning has been such a testament to the never-ending number of niches. Like, I, I have a, a friend who's 19 years old, he's about to become an EMT, you know, and the eventual goal is to become a nurse. Yeah. But there, there's this network on Ning, it's just called Firefighter Nation, and it's, it's all first responders, firefighters, and like every day another new Ning network comes out. I think I, I had breakfast with Rachel from Ning the other day, there are like 220,000 vertical social networks. And these could be for Sun developers, for, for what have you. So don't think that like, oh yeah, well our brand doesn't have a, or our, our market does not have a conversational focus yet, that means you'll never have one. That's baloney, go out there, take 15 bucks, make yourself a Ning network, or do whatever it takes, create an aggregator to take all the conversation from your market and, and make, you know, a year ago there wasn't a such thing as social media today. Now social media today is like a marketplace that's got probably a hundred different bloggers all talking about the this and that of social media. And I, I just want to, um uh, look at the Jaiku example again because you know Jaiku is very effective in the pre-launch and engaging with their users and engaging with their developers 
And you know, this was a strategy that Yuri evolved here. I'd just like you to talk about kind of how you did that, why you did that, and the results. Yeah, I think I think the key thing, at least for me, when when starting a company and working on product, is is to, you know, really connect with the people who somehow connect with the product. And sometimes they're surprising people, but uh, in the case of Jaiku, uh, a lot of geeks got excited about it. They thought it was a cool product. They connected mobile phones to the internet in new ways, and um, they got very excited. And so initially, that would be just you know people commenting on my Jaiku stream or our developer's Jaiku stream. We had the advantage that because Jaiku is a microblog, it's already a conversation platform per se, so it's pretty easy to have that conversation there. Of course, if you have a product that's not inherently a conversation, um, you know, go use Twitter, go use Jaiku, go use one of these places where you can have that conversation, and then sort of just evolve out of that where we ended up launching these developer channels where, you know, Jaiku developers could, using our APIs, you know, write applications and then talk about what they'd done. Um, and that proved really important because it meant that all of a sudden you had people who relied on the platform for the applications that they had written to succeed. So they became our best marketers. Um, they often have blogs and they would write about us um, when they wrote about their own applications. So I think that's a good point, you know, to try to get people to actually rely on your product to for their own success, for the success of their whatever it is that they're pitching, um, because they will eventually become your best marketers, and they'll do it for free. Great. And we're gonna we're gonna run through the next topic here, PR, and then we'll take questions. And when we take the questions, um, give your name, and you can address it to one of the panelists, or I'll play traffic cop here.